Hi all, how you doing? It's that time again, so uh, grab yourselves a brew, maybe a cheeky little biscuit, or mince pie, is it too early for mince pies? I don't know. Anyway, so grab yourself a nice drink, um, something to eat if you fancy, and it's time for a catch up. What I thought we'd do today is, um, this was one of my recent Lavinia samples and a few ladies asked, um, very complimentary and lovely thank you for your comments, and a few ladies asked how it was done. So I thought the best way, rather than explaining or putting it on my blog, was to do a, a YouTube. I always think it's better to actually watch somebody rather than just looking at photographs. So um, this is what we're going to do. And I did think I might do a workshop on something similar so you can actually have a go and craft along with me. Um, I do think, especially, I'm going to do quite a few more pre-recorded workshops. Thank you for those that have uh, done the ones so far. But especially with winter coming along, I think it's nice to have a workshop to work along. Um, and again, remember, you can watch them as many times as you want. So maybe do the project a few times, change your stamps, change your colours. But anything that stops us from going mad on our own this winter, I think it's really important. So I'll chat as I carry on, but what I'll do is I'll make a start. So, <clears throat> how are you all feeling today? I'm slowly improving and thank you very much for the lovely comments on the shaving foam video. It's so lovely um, of you to get in touch and put such nice comments. Honestly, it really, really does mean a lot. Um, like I say, I was all for giving up a couple of weeks ago, but your lovely comments just, you know, makes me, honestly, it just it really humbles me. Um, especially when I just, you know, have a go really. Um, and my job here is not... When I started off, I used to watch demonstrators and some people almost want to do it to prove how good they are. And that was the time when I thought, no, I want to actually help people to actually better themselves and be pleased with what they've done. None of this sort of pretending I'm amazing and I've come up with this, that and the other. Um, I do think there's too much of that in the craft industry. But um, anyway, so what we're going to do to start off with, I've got a 7x7 seven seven card. Um, again, either stencil, multifarious. Um, or pink frog one with a, a low chalk content and um, a smooth card and we're going to be using Billy Breyer now this is lovely because we're just going to use one colour and we're going with the oxide and it's the weathered wood a lovely colour this I must admit I've not used it much <clears throat> sorry excuse me I need to remember to talk slower um, so especially for this time of year I think it gives such a, a lovely lovely tone so that's what we're doing. But I've got to be honest, I think this card, again, if I just bring it in, um, this card would... Oh, look, I've not mounted it. Um, sorry. Um, it would look lovely in blue tones, maybe, maybe just faded jeans. I mean, that's the beauty of something like this. Just change it up a bit with your colours. This could very easily be a Christmas card as well. And what you've got to think of is maybe you've got friends that don't actually celebrate Christmas. I think that the word in here, seasons change as the wind moves direction. Welcome winter with great affection. That's lovely for anybody who doesn't. I mean, my husband, um, <coughs> excuse me, my husband works, um, his business is he installs and um, looks after, maintains analyzers in um, laboratories all over the UK and um, all over the world actually went to um, New Zealand a couple of years ago to, to fix a, a fault over there but a lot, quite often the lab staff we, we send I make their Christmas cards for the company to send and a lot of the lab staff don't celebrate Christmas so we're often looking for wording that isn't that traditional happy Christmas merry Christmas so again I think this would be lovely also great for a man's card same thing you could have as a as a as a girly female card um so i think it's important that to think of things like that oh look don't know where the doily appeared from we'll get rid of that so we're going to start with our card and we're going to start with the, the weathered wood now you know me i'm just going to ink up billy brayer on this edge and if you look it's not very blended is it so what we tend to do is just blend it on the craft mat and again this is a great background because don't be worried as you know I have a thing about the brayer and you will get the odd but you know what it doesn't matter if I get the odd stripe if I get I've got over that I've got over my fear of worrying if it isn't perfect because it just doesn't need to be some people can do perfect blending this way 
it just really doesn't behave for me so I go with what he gives me <coughs> excuse me so what I'm going to do now is turn my card round I've got enough that way because I want to keep if I just show you I'm mindful that in the middle I want this almost whiter lighter area so this is where I'm going to come in from the top and the bottom so same thing ink him up again blend it on my mat and just again it's a sweeping motion nice and gently and working down the card pick a bit more up and that's fine for me now I do want the corners a little bit darker so I'm just going to ink up again blend it on the mat and I'm just going to have these corners pick that ink up I want these corners a bit darker I just like my corners to be darker and I'm just going across again cleaning that ink up and this one here I've got a line there so I'll just diffuse that a little bit that's better lovely so just going to clean our brayer up and then clean my mat that's his, his job done Now again, you could have spritzed that and dipped your card in it, but uh, I haven't got time for that. So, must admit it's raining today here in, in Cheshire in the UK and it's very dull. I've got my daylight lamp on, I've got the craft room light on and it's very dull. Now, the way I'm going to come at this one thing I have learned with all the years of watching people, um, different people do di way, things uh, different ways. Now, you know me, I'm just, and, and for me, I don't think one way is particularly right and one way particularly wrong. I think as long as you've got a reason why you do something, if you're happy with it, you carry on and do it. So for me, I just teach this way because what I found is it's the best way for me for crafters to get good results. And uh, so that's why I teach this way purely. If you find another way, and the reason I'm saying this is, if you notice, we've got stamping on the design and we've got stenciling. Now, a lot of paper, people do the background first and the stenciling. That's fine. I'm not saying one's right, one's wrong. For me, I teach to do the stamping first because some ladies, when they've got a lot of oxide ink or distress ink, they find it hard to stamp over. And also, if the, anything's going to go wrong, it tends to be the stamping. So we'll add the stenciling after. As I say, it's just the way I find for me, I get better results at workshops. Ladies almost pick it up a lot easier. Now we're going to stamp the uh, meadow mushroom here. And as always, remember, use your acetate to place it. So I'm going to want it about there. So going to use the black versifying ink for this nice light tapping and again I've just cut the sides so you know me if I don't take this extra ink off I'll get it on my, my finished card so I'm just going to stamp this oh I can see a little bit of ink still on here So let's stamp that about there. And again, don't be in a rush with your stamping. Do remember to just let the ink soak in. Gosh, you know, I am feeling so much better, but I still struggle trying to breathe and talk. Not something I've ever, ever had problems with before. And I'm sure there's some of you ladies that, that, that struggle all the time. And, you know, I, I do sympathise with you. So we'll give that a few minutes and then lift it up. There we go. I'm really happy with that. Now, we're going to stamp the wreath next. And this is the most gorgeous stamp. And you actually get three stamps. A larger one, a smaller one and this tiny little one, which is perfect. Now, again, you can use your acetate to place it. 
Now we could make a full circle wreath, but I wanted to just capture almost part of a wreath. Um, I have got a thing, I do adore wreaths and anybody who again has done the workshops, we've got a workshop on a wreath and oh, I'm a bit obsessed with them. But for this, I thought we wouldn't make a full, let's just mix it up a bit. So I'm going to start with the first one and just plant it sort of here. And what's lovely about this, if you can see, I don't know if you can see, some of the berries are coloured black and some are left open. Now that's one, it's very fine, it's beautiful. Now what you can do is use your acetate to see the placement of the second. So again, look, I can see if I wanted it to be a very open wreath, I could take it up there. But I just want it a little bit closer. But look, that berry, do I want it over? I like that. If I just, if I match that there, oh, I like that. So if I'm thinking, if I can get that round there, if, <laughs> we shall see. I mean, do you know what? No matter how it stamps, I'll say to you, oh, that's lovely. That's what I wanted. Because <laughs> that's what we do. So let's see. Again, always turn it round to make it easier. Oh, no. I'm going to need it that way. Try and remember what I said. So we sort of had that there, didn't we? And sort of round a bit. Sorry, I probably got my head right in front. But do make it easy for yourself. As I say, if it's easy to move it round, you move it round. I like that shape. And don't worry about this here because... What you can do, the best way to, is your, your fine line of pen and all I'm going to do is attach that to there. And we've got our little berries to stamp as well so nobody will ever know that's where you joined it. And so what I'm thinking is, let's bring the little one in now. And the little one sort of goes the opposite way. We've almost got a lefty and a righty. And we're going to put this just below there to continue that sort of arc shape now if you weren't sure about this what I would do is once you've done your background um, just stamp this on copy of paper but I like that sort of shape um, and just stamp it on copy of paper like I say and, and have a little practice now for me I have a thing about things floating now some people like that and again that's fine but me being me it's just not for me so I tend to just draw with my fine liner pen just a couple of blades of grass almost and then just some lines some grass there so it looks like to me that just grounds it and makes it all look more believable now I was telling you about the little stamp so there's this gorgeous little stamp look Sorry, I've just got my drink. And what I'd like to do is introduce a little bit more black into this. If I bring the finished design in, you can see. Because we're going to matte and layer it on black, and because we've got not, not got a lot of colour, I just want to introduce a little bit more. So what I'm thinking is, so here, let's just add one here. And I don't want too many. But the placement's very important. <clears throat> Sorry, excuse me. So I tend to go opposite sides. So I've put one at the end, one there. So we need one on this side. I don't want too many. Maybe just coming off there. So next is here, look. So I think, perfect. Now I think we could actually get, do we want another one there? Or do we do, no, I think we need one coming this way right work my way around looking needs to be sort of equidistant so again don't rush this bit because you can spoil it we don't want any pizzas so let's have one there yeah and then we want ah that'd be nice just in there and then I'm actually going to put another one this side because there's a space there and in nature it doesn't go 
alternate does it so you almost do need a bit of random and then that's perfect because I've got a little twig coming off there right and let's bring it round <coughs> I almost think do we need one at the end do you know what let's bring the acetate in and see no that almost makes it too finished yeah there I didn't I thought it joined it up too much if we put one there so use your acetate look and we've got these twiggy bits so just attach it there yeah I'm happy with that so I'm just going to block that because we've used um a versifying ink it's got a long open time so try to get used to blotting your work otherwise if you smudge it you'll be a bit unhappy now I'm just going to add a little bit of colour to the uh, mushroom and I'm just using a brown pencil for this just a colouring pencil, nothing to, I want to keep it quite subtle, almost quite muted colours. So I just want to add almost a hint of brown and then I'm just going to go a little bit deeper down here where the shade will be, just to give it a bit of, bit of three dimension. And as I say, you can easily do that just with one colour. So we'll start off light and then just blend in that gap between the two. We see that now that's our stamping done so now I would use the stencil I mean you could if you wanted just flick water at the background and leave that I think it's a lovely background but I do want to use this stencil this is is it the laurel stencil or foliage I think this is laurel and I'm going to go back with the weathered wood. So we're going to use tone on tone. And I'm going to use my stencil brush. As I say, it's very dark here in the UK. I do wonder, what's it like for you? Certainly had lots of rain the last couple of days. My pumpkins are getting wet at the front door. I assume that's okay because they grow in the field, don't they? I have to get some straw to put round them. So with your stencil, always be mindful with the stencil about the edges. You don't want to get straight lines in your work. So I'm going to start in the middle. And I want to have, just look at the shape. I like this where it's coming down. So I want to have that there. I'm going to work on this area. Now with my stencil brush, I'm just going to brush around the design. And always be mindful of going in the direction of the stencil. Don't go against it or you might damage the stencil. And make sure you don't go up to this edge. So I'm just working in a little area at a time. And always remember, just lift it up. Yes, yeah, I like that already. Like I say, that's the main one. That's the focal one I want. And I'll work on this here now. I'm just holding it with my hand. There's no point me taping it down. It won't take long. And like I say, I like the flexibility of just being able to lift up. So I need it a little bit darker there. Now you won't really see it much on the dark. Obviously these lighter areas, which is why I came lighter when I was brayer in the ink. Yeah. So I'm happy with that. But if I turn it round, can you see? So that's this nice middle bit. So I just want to add a little bit here and here. So again, I can choose which bit. Maybe that bit of the... St I think that would look nice there, wouldn't it? So we'll just, I'm carefully, as I say, keeping away from these edges because there's nothing worse than getting your ink on that and having a straight line and it's spoiling. And you may ask, how does she know that? Because yes, I've done it. Yeah. See, I like that, the way it's just coming down. So can you see it's not balanced? It needs something here. That one there would look nice. But again, be mindful of that edge. And we don't need to add too much. If you notice, I'm always lifting up and checking. Yeah, see, I don't want it any darker than that there. I hardly put any on. But let's see if we can just get a hint here. We will have to go stronger with our colour. But just see if we can get a little hint of the foliage up here. That laurel, yes, we can. It's almost a bit like a ghosting image. But I like that, that there. Now, I think that's enough. I'm going to leave that. 
do you know what? I might just add a tiny bit down here. What shape? Let's have a look. That one. I like that bit there. I don't want much. Just a hint, yeah. The merest suggestion, I think. So, if I just bring it up, can you see? And I just think that looks lovely. What I'm going to do now is just flick a little bit of water not a lot with the fan brush just because I love to do this on backgrounds and remember we're okay this is a permanent ink so it won't move it's just on that oxide ink that that will add a little bit of full bleaching just all goes with getting that almost that nice um, background now what I have done to save time I've stamped the sentiment on a piece of card and I'm just going to edge that so it all looks nice. We want that nice design that all blends together and I'm just going to edge it with the same colour, just with a smoothie, just to bring a little bit of ink. I don't want a perfect line. You know, some people actually take the ink pad but and, and that's fine. Just for me, I find that's almost too much of a perfect edge. I wanted more of a, um, a random edge. Right, and what I need now is a piece of kitchen roll. And I'm just going to dab that because those speckles. And in fact, I'm just going to run the heat tool over it. Always remember to dry it from the back. Just to help keep your card flat. Again, quick dry. Just give it another little dab. And the reason I want it dry because of the next bit so for the next bit what we're just going to do is we're going to use some of the mica minerals and this is the gold so we're just really going to have gold grey I think and that's why we went for the brown I know probably the mushrooms are brown anyway but um and what I'm going to do is I love painting with this so with my usual coffee stirrer I have to say I use these for everything and I'm just going to put a tiny bit on my mat there we go and then add some water and then what we're going to do is we're going to paint now I dare say if you've got a gold pen you could paint them that way if someone's a little bit more but for me they, I want to keep it all tone on tone and I just find this is a lovely way of using the product that I've got I'm just going to lift it up a little and what I'm going to do my hands are a bit shaky today I'm just literally going to dot in I just find with these little berries, it's easier to dot them, especially the smaller ones. The larger ones you can almost paint as a, as a circle, but the smaller ones, actually all you need is a dot. Now, I will take my time just doing this. I don't see the point of rushing and making... A, a bad sample to show you just because I've rushed so do bear with me I think now's the time to enjoy that nice drink you've got your nice brew are we on tea or coffee I've got water today but I might just treat myself to a nice coffee I must admit we've got um, a Tassimo I think it is a coffee machine and I, I love um lattes or macchiatas so um it broke so my husband bought us a new one um because i couldn't survive without my daily coffee i do love a nice cup of coffee although i have to say i've got friends that only drink tea i am funny i like tea first thing in the morning but then i do like a nice coffee so say just take your time 
And when you're doing this at home, honestly, especially if you've had a bad day or a bit fed up, this is lovely because just take your time. You know, actually paint them in, but look how beautiful they look. I have to say, I've probably told you, I have a, a, a pot of water and every day I put fresh water in the pot. The first thing I do when I come in my craft room and I have my fan brush and this lovely fine brush and I use them for everything. All my watercolour painting, my flicking water, just the two brushes. I think a bit like a chef, isn't it? When they find a, a knife they like, they like a, a good sharp knife. And it's just like me with this this brush. It wasn't very expensive either, but you know it's just my favourite for for painting. So just filling all these in. Now, if you're talking back to me and telling me what you're having to eat and what you're having to drink, I shall read your comments and see what you've actually said to me. Oh, we missed one there we go and if you're shouting at me joe you've missed one right i think have we got them all what do you reckon oh no see it's a good job i could hear you thank you for telling me i'd missed those three yeah oh should we, is that one there do you know what if it isn't it is now <laughs> lovely now what we're going to do so that's the, the watercolour painting, as it were, with the mica powders. And um, the next thing we're going to do is add this little bit here. I'm not sure if you can see it. There we go. If I just get just that, I like to call it secret uh, writing. I know it's not secret, but makes me happy calling it that. So, and for that, all we're going to do is I'll get my stamping back on. Now. The reason I stamped the sentiment before was because now I'm going to stamp in Versamark ink. So you really want your sentiment as clean as possible. And obviously I used a black ink for this. So it just gave me time to clean my sentiment because otherwise your ink pad ends up like this. I get very touchy over my ink pads. So I'm using a Versamark for this, I had to think. Versamark, so it's a sticky ink pad. The one that gives you the watermark. And we're just going to have, I'll try and get this parallel. So we'll have one there and we're going to alter how much of the sentiment we see. I think we can have one there and then we'll just have part of it there. And then I think we'll just probably catch the top edge here. And then, now obviously it does make your stamp sticky, so I'll give it a quick wipe. And then with my little brush that nearly escaped me then, I'm just going to pick up a little bit of the powder and almost dab it on. I find if you um, brush it too much, you can almost smudge the Versa mark. So for me, I find it easier to dab it on. I must use a dabbing motion. And once you've dabbed all over, then you can almost use a sweeping motion. Such a pretty colour, this. As I say, really, for me, I think this could be... I might just work on this design as a sort of Christmas card. I do think it'll be beautiful. Right, so I'm going to put the lid on, only because I'm one of these. I'm afraid if I don't, I'll knock it over. And that's one thing I do teach at workshops, is always put your lid on. Because once you've seen somebody knock the pot over and then being upset, not the easiest of thing to catch off the floor, is it? So I'm just going to clean that up, give it a pat its bottom. Now, that little bit could go back in the pot, but don't look, we just binned that. Right, let's give this a wipe and have a look at how we're doing. So this is, if I just bring it up, can you see the, the lovely hidden writing there? So we're nearly done, actually. So, you know, 
if you break everything, it's a bit like a recipe, not that I cook, but anyway, a bit like a recipe. And if you break things down into stages, so you could call it a day there, but a few little finishing touches. As you know, I adore my white Posca and I'm so thrilled to see so many other crafters now using white Poscas. Remember, you've always got to shape your Posca. And my fine one, as I've told you before, isn't working. But I like it because it's it's got a fine nib. So I'm just going to put a bit of Posca on my mat. And I just want a little bit of highlight here. A little bit of highlight there. And just on these bits round here. And on the black. So where the black berries are. Not all of them, but the majority. Just want to put a little dab. Just as though the light's catching it. I mean, you could if you want to introduce a moon mask, but I just think it takes away from this design. I don't think we need one. We have them on other ones, but I think this just, I like the simplicity of this. I think it's its enough. Just a few little down the side. Trace is drawn in where we want the highlights. Right, so that's the fine one finished with. Next time now, a couple of the ladies at the workshops love doing this oh better move that out the way so it's your splats so let's just add a few and again nice flick pretend it's a whip so it's a bit of a, a whipping motion there we go that's enough and i'd better just clean up the ones that have missed and gone over there And the last thing we would do is attach the sentiment. Now, one thing I have noticed, if you use double-sided tape to attach your sentiment, where we've got the um, mica powder here, it um, doesn't really hold. So my suggestion would be is I'm going to use pin flare. Um, I just find that the double-sided tape won't hold. So I'm just going for a little bit of pin flare. Again, make sure when you oh, put your lid on your pin flare, you pop it up to the top and then it won't get any air and dry up. And I just use a little, I think it's a brad all this. To be honest, I bought it as a craft show just because I love the wooden handle. <laughs> but it's so useful for putting my glue on. And oh, I'm all fingers and thumbs today. I do apologise. So let's see, where do we, yeah, I think I want it there. And again, I can just move it round because I've used... Oh, look, I've got some mica on there, but never mind. Give my hands a bit of a wipe. So, I think we're done, to be honest, ladies and gents. If I bring in this one. So, this is the one we've done today. See why I didn't glue it down so I could quickly move it. And that's the one I'd done previous. But I do think, you know, if you wanted to batch card make, I mean, how long's that taken us? I'm not sure, maybe 20 minutes? Don't know how long I've been waffling. Um, but like I say, I do think you could batch card make those. So, I hope you've enjoyed it. Sorry, I'm stood in the light, I'm casting a bit of a shadow. I'm off now for that well-deserved coffee. As I say, thank you for your lovely comments. Honestly, I really do appreciate them. And um, I'm just going to send you lots of love and hugs back because you've sent me lots. And honestly, the healing hugs are working. And I'm just going to say bye for now. Take care, everybody. Thanks a million. Honestly, you don't know. Thanks. Bye for now.